The life of a small business owner is typically jam-packed with day-to-day -day duties of running their business. Add to that the challenge of trying to fit in your personal life and your family. Now imagine doing all of that while suffering constant pain from fibromyalgia or any other chronic pain condition. Well, with me today is Rebecca Rengo. She's a pain relief coach and expert, and she's here to talk to us about this issue and how it relates to the small business community. Rebecca, welcome to SBTV.com. Thank you for having me, Susan. Well, the first thing to talk about, and actually I've, I've told the audience many times, mm -hmm. I have fibromyalgia, so I, I do wake up every morning in pain. It's not easy. So I'm very interested to hear what you have to say, but first, Tell us a little bit about your background. How did you become an expert in the field of pain? I became an expert first through my own personal experience. I have multiple chronic pain conditions myself, including TMJ, damaged vertebrae in my neck, and fibromyalgia. And so I've always been interested in the dynamics of chronic pain and then majored in social work and have spent my career helping people who suffer with chronic pain. But now, Rebecca, you've actually you've written a book, uh, Beyond Chronic Pain, yes. and you have your own business. So how did you decide to start your business? I actually started my first business in 1989. I was on faculty at Washington University in the neurology department working on Alzheimer's disease research, and I really enjoyed that job. It had a passion for working with older adults. And so I left WashU and started a private practice providing geriatric care management and psychotherapy services. And I had been doing that up until the last year and a half when I came out with my book. And now my passion is taking taking me to focus on writing and speaking and reaching out to people of all ages with chronic pain conditions. You've done a lot of things. How do you manage personally? I mean, I know some of the things that I try to do, but how do you manage personally to have the business, write a book, um, all the things that you've done, how have you managed? I really had an aha moment when I was about 40 years old. I was a single mother with two very active young boys and running my own business, no family in the area to help me at all with any emotional or financial support, totally dependent on making everything work. So, you know, women, we try to do everything as best as we, we can. We try to be superwoman, yes, don't we? Yes, yes we do. Yes. And so I was running my kids to every after-school activity, you know, volunteering on boards in the community, taking every client who called me so I was working over hours, and, of course, not taking care of myself. One day, I heard my young son call to me for help, and I was in bed, and I could not get up. My pain was so severe and my fatigue was so overwhelming that I pushed and pushed myself with everything I had and I could not move. And every mother knows when your child needs you, all you want to do is go to them and make sure they're okay. And when I couldn't do that, I realized I have to put myself first or I'm not going to be here to take care of my kids and to pay my bills. And so from that day on, that was the strategy I adopted. That sounds like a great strategy, but it's a lot easier said than done. So how did you make those strategies work? What are some of the things that you did? What I started doing was scheduling something nice for myself every day because I was putting myself last. And I realized if I'm going to feel better, I really do have to put myself first. So I would schedule time for light exercise and meditation in the morning before I started taking care of other people. I also started saying no to people. So That's not an easy thing to do, especially for women. It was very difficult. Um, my kids wanted to be in every activity, go to their friend's house. You know how kids want to be run around all the time. So I started saying no to them. I started saying no to clients. When I was full, I couldn't take another client. And I started saying no to volunteer opportunities and only stayed on boards that were a true priority. I was going to say those volunteer things can really eat up your time. They really can. And I realized that this was the right strategy when a few years later I was in the car with my youngest son. And he said, Mom, you know, I remember when you were always sick and crabby. And now you're the most fun mom. Oh my, isn't that amazing? And so it really is the quality of what we do and not the quantity. And that's very important to keep in mind. But let me ask you this question, because I know personally I struggle with this. You said you try to take time to do something 
just for yourself mm-hmm. that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. But I think it's normal. Women feel guilty and selfish trying to take that time. What do you tell yourself? What's the self-talk, pep talk that you can give yourself to carve that time out? I, what I do personally and encourage clients to do is to schedule it first on your calendar and to schedule it in advance. So that is a set appointment, just like a business appointment or a volunteer appointment. And vary what you do. So it may be a massage. It may be just taking time out to read a book. You know, vary what you do to keep it special. But schedule that time and honor it. I encourage people to use positive self-talk and use affirmations to reinforce that they're worth that time. Wow, and you, you actually are a coach now, so you work mm-hmm. with people. You mentioned you're doing more speaking. Of course, you have the book. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now. Now I am providing pain relief coaching for people who have chronic pain conditions, and I also work a lot with women who are stressed, and they may not have chronic pain conditions, but they have problems finding balance with work and life. And stress is... A big issue that many of us face. I also do speaking for non-for-profit agencies and professional organizations such as nurses on how to take better care of patients with chronic pain and I'm starting a new program for corporations on presenteeism where people show up to work but they're not productive frequently because of health problems. Boy isn't that the truth. You go into the office and you try to make busy, you know, Mm -hmm. do those little things Mm -hmm. that don't require that mind power, so absolutely. Well, I appreciate you sharing all this information to me. What an amazing thing you're doing. And and the book is Beyond Chronic Pain. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, Rebecca, you have a website if people would like more information. Can you share that with us? I do. And my website is beyondchronicpain.com. Wonderful. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, this has certainly been enlightening to me. And, of course, if any of you are out there suffering in silence or now realizing you may be affected about what we've talked about today, please take the time to get help for yourself and know that you can live a normal, productive life and while living out your entrepreneurial dreams. So for more information, visit Rebecca's website, she mentioned, which is beyondchronicpain.com, Or you can also find great resources at the American Pain Foundation website, which is painfoundation.org. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.